Hey everybody, welcome back to Video So Terra Connecting Series, the unported playlist where it takes one of my favorite unported arcade games of all time. But we are right in the middle of Janktoberfest, so today we're taking a look at Silent Dragon, a beat em up released in 1992 by Taito. This is basically what happens if you take Final Fight and mix it with a kung fu action film in all the best ways and all the worst ways. Before you get to find Valdo, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, and subscribe, and ring that notification bell, definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But right off the top, I actually kind of enjoy Silent Dragon, even though it is janky, and even though it has a tendency to drive me nuts later in the game. But the first stage is pretty much classic beat-em-up action. We've got that awesome golden hour sunset in the background, we've got enemies busting through doors just like you would see in Final Fight. The inspiration that Taito took from Capcom is obviously being worn on the game's sleeve right here. Which is not a bad thing if it can keep up with the Final Fight mechanically, you can have a really awesome release on your hands. And I will say mechanically, it is a very competent beat-em-up game. You have all your punches, all your kicks, your jumps, everything you need. And when you're actually trying to hit the opponent in front of you, you don't need to be perfectly lined up to strike him. That's the number one cardinal sin in beat-em-up games. And this one definitely does not commit that. What it does commit in later levels, though, is sheer slog, forcing you to fight so many different opponents without advancing the screen and basically giving you boss-level enemies over and over again just to see a little further into the game. But just like Capcom, you had to beat a car up here. I don't know what cars have done to these people, but it seems like in arcade games, destroying vehicles with your fists and hands is just something that's always going to happen. But I will say, this game is weird in a good way. It starts off relatively normal. You don't really get much story, but honestly, where do you in an arcade game? But in a little bit, it's going to get much stranger. It actually kind of feels like two games stapled together. One, a traditional kung fu style beat-em-up, that 80s B-movie style you all know and love. And half a pseudo horror beat-em-up when monsters start getting into the mix as well. It's never really explained why monsters start appearing. It's just how the game works. And you totally have to go with it. But I do love the enemies here. This dude looks like a reject from something that WWF would have cast aside in his light purple arm bandages. It's a total vibe and it does kind of work. But the minute you beat this boss, suddenly the game's going to throw something else at you that you weren't really expecting. And that's going to be this flying bat monster. Looks like Bat Boy out of the Weekly World News. Now suddenly, every once in a while, monsters are going to appear. But for the most part, you're still going to be fighting standard enemies. It's almost like Big Trouble in Little China got an unofficial beat-em-up game. And wow, do I really wish that it just gotten a beat em up game if anybody out there is listening and you want to develop a game on an existing property please make a big trouble in little china beat em up or even an escape from new york one i would play that 10 out of 10 times and 11 out of 10 on sundays but you'll see here as we get further into the game there are four selectable characters and now suddenly as we've gotten a little further in enemies are going to start having life bars that are equal to some of the earlier level bosses and then when you beat them all, you're going to advance to the screen maybe four to five feet and have to do the entire same thing over again. And that is what I think makes a beat em up janky. There's two things that I cannot stand in the genre. One, when you think you should be striking an opponent and you're not. And two, when the game just refuses to actually show you anything new. It's so obvious that this game was padded for runtime. They wanted to be in that 40 minute limit. And you'll see here, it gave us the go symbol. And we literally just moved to display one more set of shelves in a men's clothing store and now we have the same amount of opponents to face with those same gigantic life bars and it takes three to four minutes to get out of this one area when in reality they should have just moved the game along quicker but now that we're outside again the game gives us something new to see so it kind of is just tying with our emotions here and you'll see that we do have some power-ups like that tnt box if you hit it at the right time with the enemies near the TNT, you can burn them down. And you will see here that suddenly the game's going to give us a go icon, and there really isn't anywhere to go. You still have to say on the same screen, which I think is just a bug in the design. I don't think it was supposed to say go there whatsoever. But at least the game has a good soundtrack. You can't complain about Taito soundtracks or East Technologies in this instance. So go ahead and fill this for 45 seconds or so, and I'll come back and show you way more of this game I love and kind of hate.
obviously that's not up to the same standard as something like a Zuntata soundtrack, but it does work for the game, and it does have some of that kung fu movie flair. And this is what really drives me nuts about this game. It toys with your emotions. The minute it drives you nuts, it changes the level, gives you something new to do, something new to see, and eases up on the enemies and their life bars. But the minute you think the game is going to let up and it'll really give you a good chance at seeing something new, it's going to slog itself right back down with way too many enemies on the same screen for way too long. This is one of those games where you can 100% tell they just wanted to have it take so long to beat and they wanted it to get an average of X amount of quarters out of every player's pocket. So they just kept throwing enemies on the same screen over and over and over again to make you continue to credit feed it unless you got extremely good at the game. And Honestly, it's not the type of thing I can imagine anyone in arcades back in the day or now trying to get really good at. But it does have a fun sense of humor. That monkey there just threw a Molotov cocktail, which I think would make it a monkey top cocktail. Tell me down below in the comments what you think. So it does have its sense of charm. And that's what drives me most nuts about this game. It is charming, it's funny, it is fun, but it just doesn't know when to let up on the overwhelming amount of enemies with gigantic health bars. Pretty much every screen, two to three enemies are going to come up towards the end with a boss amount of health, and you're going to have to pummel them until you can move on. But I do love this area here where you can throw people off the bridge. And of course, it also has some Streets of Rage influences with those women with leather skirts and whips. It seems to be if you're a beat em up 50% of the time, you're going to have that in there. And then you move on to the next screen and suddenly you are fighting a monster. Inexplicably, the game gives you no reason why this is happening. You're just supposed to go with it, but honestly, just go with it. You're beating up what looks like a gigantic mutated armadillo, and you really can't complain too much about that. But you can totally try leaving me a comment down below if you don't like mutated armadillos. It just does feed the engagement. We always need more of that. But again, this is the thing about Silent Dragon. It makes you want to hate it, and then it makes you want to love it. It is such an uneven experience. That is just down to some of the jank in there. Because for every time the game delays you and makes you want to quit, then it's going to show you something absolutely hilarious and fun and makes you want to see what happens next. I have no idea what's going on here. It's a mix of what looks like Day of the Dead funerary stuff with Native American iconography and monsters from Weekly World News, a mummy and flying bat boy. Why is it in the game? I have no idea. Am I amused by seeing it? 100%. Do I love grabbing a mummy and using my knee to just absolutely ram his teeth in? You know I do. And this next soundtrack bit, great as well. Go ahead and listen for 30 seconds and I'll be back with more game. Really can't complain about the soundtrack and the game will give you new and interesting mechanics and then basically kind of fail at actually executing them you'll see there's a switch on the wall here and if you hit that switch a door is going to open up and it's going to suck enemies out apparently we're at a really high elevation and pressure is a thing but it seems like we're at a mountain or a canyon level so i'm actually a little surprised by that but whatever you do it seems like the enemies refuse to fly through that door i've seen it happen all of once so it seems like the programming is a bit odd but then in the next area you can totally knock guys down to their death and then you backflip into the same area landing totally fine don't know how we can do it and they can't but it's just one of those things and then when you get down here there's a gigantic wall of fire that is inexplicably on one panel doesn't think there's anything behind it whatsoever but if you get knocked back into it or your opponents get knocked back into it they catch on fire it's just a wall of fire folks that's what silent dragon does and you need to deal with it although i will say the final boss battle again is epically fun and a little bit cheesy and i do love it and this is half of a very good game married to a very janky other half you want to play it you want to enjoy it you want to have fun with friends and you definitely should of all the games on unported playlist janktoberfest this time i would say silent dragon is my favorite this is one that i do enjoy playing i just wish it was better and that's kind of what makes the jankiest that unfulfilled promise of it being a great game because it could have been epic but it ended up being in the mediocre category but honestly this final boss here riding around what looks like a segue long before they existed with this shocking purple hair and what looks like a pip boy on his wrist works but it was just a terminator in disguise the entire time it wasn't a human it was a robot and that's just how this game works try that leave me a comment down below tell me if you've ever played the game and what you think about it but that is janktoberfest hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you next time Bye bye